Yeah, I, I know exactly how you feel. About the three beer part, or if you feel sick? <laughs> the three beers. <laughs> no, the sick part. <laughs> oh, wow. So everything's going good with yeah. you and your family and all that stuff? Yes, yes, sir. Everyone's doing well. Well, how's the weather where you're at? It's, uh, it's actually not too, too bad. It's just been a little chilly. That's about it. And then a couple of nights ago, there was snow, uh, snow and, and ice. But uh, we haven't seen you know that since it happened, I think, Friday. But other than that, yeah, it's just been a little chilly. That's it. Now, I should invite you two over to my place. All of a sudden, I got a lake now where my, my uh, horse, you know, uh, pen, or what do you call it? Uh, corral or whatever it is, uh, is all underwater, like about four feet of water. Just, we've had that much rain nonstop for the last week and a half. Oh, yeah. You know, this I, year, I, actually, we, oh, sorry, James, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I watched the weather, the map that I give out for the report for the truckers, and, and I got to tell you, Gary, the whole western part of your state is nothing but solid green for rain. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, Ryan, what is going on with UFO reports? Uh, not too much. We actually have uh, quite a decent amount here. Um, okay, I actually well, looked on the you, uh, MUFON site okay, this, but before uh, you this do, time. Uh, Ryan, before you do, what, what's like, that? we got to run this first, okay? So it's, stay tuned. Okay. As soon as it's over, you go right into it as soon as it stops, okay? Okay. Broadcasting building, New York City. The bells you hear are ringing to warn the people to evacuate the city as Martians approach. Estimated in the last two hours, three million people have moved out along the roads to the north. Hutchison River Parkway is still kept open for motor traffic. Avoid bridges to Long Island, hopelessly scammed. All communication with Jersey Shore closed 10 minutes ago. Okay, now you can do your UFO report. <laughs> All right, this comes from uh, the MUFON site here. And this is on January 26th. It says, as I was driving home past uh, New York Airport, I saw a triangle-shaped smoke cloud traveling upward. And I know for a fact that it wasn't a plane because I took a video of the plane landing and had both plane and the object I saw in the video. All I could make out was the smoke smoke object. It had to have been an object that was possibly covered up by smoke. And he said there were no factories in the area and it was on a clear day. So it's pretty odd there. Hear too many about smoky UFOs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, this next one is uh, January 26th as well. And it comes from uh, Virginia. It says, I witnessed a trail of lights of various sizes and levels of brightness spaced apart. They were all perfectly aligned in formation. The lights were viewed. There was a group of them. And they said it made an arrow type, uh, I guess. Um, what am I trying to say? Like a picture of an arrow in a way, he said. Um, but uh, anyways, they moved. Uh, they traveled downward. Uh, uh, on a slope across the sky, and then they moved at a very smooth, moderate, and consistent pace. Uh, they looked uh, effortless and quite beautiful, he said. I could uh, hear nothing usual, but there was some static on my music, which is strange because he was streaming it from a cell phone. Interesting. So that's kind of odd. Yeah, you know, I keep getting, just real quick, I keep getting these uh, sightings of uh, bright lights in a row. And, I mean, that's honestly 80% of these and the ones I'm getting in my email. It's, it's pretty crazy. All right. So this one here is from January 28th. It says, I was driving home with my family headed to, uh, north on I-69 towards Fort Wayne, Indiana, when I happened to look above the GM plant and saw a 30-foot-long silver cigar-shaped object about 500 feet above the plant. I observed it for 30 seconds, and then within a few seconds, it was out of sight. It either disappeared or flew, flew at a high-rated speed. Uh, it was at a dead stop. 
also. So that's pretty. Uh, that's a pretty good sighting, I guess. Sir. Yeah, that's exactly what me and my wife saw. Yeah, and about thirty. <laughs> right. That that means it's a compact Euro model. <laughs> you know, you would have to think too that there had to have been a bunch of other people seeing this if it was over the GM plant. Well, I would think there would you know be a mean? lot. Yeah, a lot of people should have seen that one. All right. Well, this next one here is from Minnesota, and this happened on the 28th as well. Now, he starts describing um, his, uh, I guess his daily, I guess he works at the uh, casino out here. It says he travels to the uh, Treasure Island Casino near Red Wing, Minnesota. He says he lives in Rochester, and he said he takes Highway 52 North out of Rochester to Highway 58. And then as he... I gets on. He gets on a highway or country road one. He says, as he heads towards down a highway, he sees uh, this blinking light that flashes a bunch of different colors. He says, now it's been seen a couple times in two different areas. He goes, sometimes it's very big and sometimes it's real small. He thought it was the planet Jupiter because of how bright it was in the sky. But after doing some research, he says, um. It's fairly, he's fairly certain it's not Venus. I'm sorry, Venus. Is that, that's what he meant. He said, this thing changes color rapidly, and it looks like a spinning. It's spinning incredibly fast. Sometimes it changes sizes and pulsates, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't move at all. He said, after I left the casino, it's usually gone from the night sky. I have seen it as early as 11 o'clock p.m. and as late as 3 a.m. Well, that's pretty weird. It's a bunch of different colors, so... Yeah, a lot of orbs this this week. So, and this one here is on MUFON. Also, there's actually picture, pictures next to it, and you can click on those and view this one. I'm about to read to you. Now it says it says these photos were taken over a period of years by a camera trap uh, aimed south from the beach on a uh, lower uh, Sugarloaf Key. This is a very small uh, sample of many photos of streaks in the sky that were taken, and basically what it is is a uh, uh, image, I guess, of a uh, couple of orbs that have been in the same place back and forth. But I saw the photos. They actually don't look too bad, but it, it is hard to, uh, you know, decipher between a star and an orb, you know. But uh, you guys can check that out. It's the uh, fourth listing down. I will. After now, the, the uh, next. What's that? I said I will right after the show. All right. <laughs> All right. This uh, next one here is from uh, yesterday. It says, now he starts off explaining that uh, there's two different orbs. One's blue, one's amber, and uh, they stay, I guess, in the sky for a long time. He said, often in pairs, I've seen them singular as well as split into two and quickly go back together. They typically are over the tree line about a half mile from my house. My house guests, as well as neighbors, have witnessed these on a number of occasions in all kinds of weather, windy, clear, rainy, and length of uh, length of time, amber lights seem to be increasing. I've I've had a helicopter that wasn't familiar fly directly overhead them, leave, and then come back. And he says he attached a video off to the right, and he has a video attached there, and you guys can click on that as well. What do you think about the video? Um, honestly, it looks like the video that, um, I've been, that I've taken a couple of times. So I, I do understand and I do get what he's, uh, recording, to be honest. It, it looks like just like, uh, looks like two orbs. I mean, we've, the, what gets me the most, I was just talking to my wife about was the amber lights. They're in pairs. Now we, we've seen this out here at least five times, amber lights in pairs traveling it's it's strange to me and the blue light we've seen out here at least does the same thing that he said in there so it it does it does make sense for sure but the video looks legit well you know one thing you know last night i don't know if you listened to the show we had bruce mcabee on the show yeah and you know what i found very interesting is what he was saying so many people are taking videos and what it is, it's commercial aircraft, you know, because of the amber and the blue light and the headlights on, you know, the wings of the plane. 
And w- w- the people all of a sudden say, oh, it, it vanished. Well, what happens is what uh, Bruce said. Now, he's an expert on on that. That's what he did. Yep. You know, and he said what happens is these aircraft all of a sudden turn. So, you know, when you're sitting there looking at it, the sky at a distance, you think you've seen a UFO and poof, it's gone. What's happened? And in fact, what he's saying is some of these are aircraft and they're turning and that gives it the appearance. Am I right, James, that they disappear? Yeah, and that's exactly what, what is going on. But, you know, we've we've checked into this on some of those and uh, we've come through some conclusions. But, yeah, that's what well, I'm saying. I'll say I, I called up the control tower in Las Vegas and I talked to you know, one of the, uh, you know, radar uh, operators, the con- one of the controllers. And yeah. I said, there is somebody in Las Vegas, and he knew who it was instantly, who's flooding the Internet with these UFOs over Las Vegas. And after the guy quit laughing, he said, look, if there was UFOs off to the mountains, which is like 10 to 15 miles or closer from Las Vegas, what would happen is we would be on a lockdown. No flight's going to come mm-hmm. in. No flights are going to uh, come out. So he gave me a phone number for the Air Force near Area 51, the, the Air Force base there, and somebody to talk to. So I talked to them. Oh, also, this controller did say the same thing that Air Force told me. It is twice a month that the uh, military does have helicopters out there checking, you know, the surrounding mountains around uh, Las Vegas, because years ago, you remember they detonated a lot of nuclear weapons out there. Yep. They're checking for radiation. Now, also, I, I then made the phone call, talked to somebody in the control tower over at the Air Force Base. And uh, I think he was a major or something. I can't remember his name. And he said the same thing. He said, look, if there is UFOs being like every other day all around las vegas no aircraft commercial we would never let any commercial aircraft go in or go out they would be grounded two is we would dispatch our fighters to investigate immediately and he said his feelings was again he mentioned on his own that the uh i can't remember the department but they go out twice a month with helicopters and they said, you know, check the surrounding areas for radiation levels. Now I mentioned that to Bruce last night and Bruce backed up exactly what I heard from the control tower uh, at the uh, Las Vegas international airport. And the same thing I heard from the air force. Hmm. Interesting. Now, we have to take a break. We'll be back in two minutes, and then we can continue on. Uh, Brian? Sounds good. Okay. Chase the bag, it was a biker. And I drove his motorcycle very fast. Drove a big chop pot with a gang color jacket and I ran down citizens for laughs. He had an old lady named Petula who packed an automatic 45 gun. They had just come up from California where they'd shot six cops for fun. Jake thought it was the best there was. was down the interstate he saw. Till the day he tangled with the county sheriff who they all called 104. On a Thursday evening And Jake, he was feeling kind of mean Cause he just ran out of his favorite drug You know, the one called Amphetamine So he started up to Petula And he said, say, baby, let's split There's a little gas station on down the road Might be fun to hit So they drove up to the station And they both jumped off of Jake's ride They were up to the original Jake's decision As they both saw to the inside the attendant, he was an old man And you know he didn't think it very funny When Petula pulled out that great big gun Said, honey, give me all your money Well, the old man opened up the cash drawer And Jake grabbed money and ran With Petula out the door to the big chop pile 
If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local...